In this video we share Pope, Benedict XVI and his prophecy on war and terror. The situation all over the world is very anxious, and we humans are often unaware that an even fiercer battle is taking place in the spiritual field for the souls of mankind. Pope, Benedict XVI has repeatedly uttered prophetic words that touch on the core of today's problems. Man, not God, has started the cycle of death, and people must realize as soon as possible that only a return to God, under the protection of his protection, can stop what is coming. Unfortunately, it's like no one hears. Neither the cries of the world nor the cries of heaven like Fatima, where Our Lady as a mother came to humanity to warn us to stop insulting the Lord. In this miraculous sanctuary of Our Mother, it was Pope Benedict XVI in 2010 who warned with prophetic words. There will be wars and terror. The prophecy of Fatima is not concluded. I entrust to Our Lady of Fatima all the priests. I entrust to heaven all the nations and states of the world, and to the Virgin of Fatima all the priests, said Benedict. He also warned that the events in Fatima prophesied in secret were yet to come, but also called on humanity to turn to God. Those who think that the mission of the Fatima prophecy is over are deceived, Benedict XVI warned, stressing that man has started a cycle of death and terror that he cannot stop because nations, races and individuals are driven by selfishness. That is why we should listen to Our Lady's call and surrender to God and God's love. And what does it mean to obey Our Lady's call, the call of Fatima? Also, the Pope discerns in peace by analyzing the mystery of Fatima and writes. Penance? 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 The key to understanding the third secret is the triple invocation, penance. Penance? Penance? It is reminiscent of the beginning of the Gospel, repent and believe the Gospel. Understanding the signs of the times means accepting the call to penance, and turning and believing. That is the answer that the current historical moment demands of us, which is characterized by the serious dangers shown in the pictures that follow. The central message of Our Lady of Fatima is penance. Our Lady strongly wanted to encourage the world to reject evil and repent for sins. That is the key to understanding that secret. It all revolves around the need for repentance. An angel with a burning sword next to the Mother of God is reminiscent of similar images in Revelation. He represents the threat of judgment that has loomed over the world. Today, the idea that the world could be burned to ashes in a lake of fire no longer seems like a mere fantasy. That man alone, with his inventions, can use a burning sword. The apparition also gives us saving consolation in the form of the Mother of God, who stands against the force of destruction and who calls for penance to stop that force. This is the hardest part in apparitions. It seems that God can cut us all down with a fiery sword. However, Cardinal Ratzinger explains that the burning sword is something we create ourselves, like an atomic bomb, not something that comes from the sky. The good news for us is that in the apparition the burning sword went out when it touched the light of Our Lady and after the call, penance. Penance? Penance? The Immaculate has the last word and its power can stop any cataclysm. The importance of human freedom should be emphasized, the future is not a given fact and is not written in stone. The picture the children saw is not a picture of a given future in which nothing can change. Moreover, the meaning of apparitions is to emphasize human freedom, and encourage people to use that freedom for good. The apparitions want to move the forces of change in the right direction. Contrary to popular belief, Our Lady's apparitions at Fatima are not a picture of what will happen. They are a picture of what could happen if we do not respond to the Mother's call to penance and conversion of heart. We have free will and we should use it for the good of humanity. The concluding part of the secret is a comforting vision, which seeks to heal the history of blood and tears with the healing power of God. Under the cross the angels gather the blood of the martyrs and with it give life to the souls, who thus come to God. 
Just as the church was born from the death of Christ, from his pierced side, so the death of a martyr is fruitful for the future of the church. Therefore, the third part of the secret, so frightening at first, ends with a picture of hope, no suffering is in vain and the persecuted church, the church of the martyrs, becomes a signpost to people in search of God. It is true that the apparition contains much suffering and persecution, but they are not in vain. The church may suffer a lot in the future and this should come as no surprise. The church has been going through persecution since the crucifixion of Christ, and our present sufferings will bear fruit in the future. I have conquered the world. My immaculate heart will win. What does that mean? A heart open to God, purified by the contemplation of God, is more powerful than weapons of any kind. The evil one has power over the world, he has power because our free will constantly strays from God. But, freedom to choose evil no longer has the last word. The word that will prevail is this, in the world you have torment, but be brave, I have conquered the world. The message of Fatima invites us to believe this promise. To conclude, the Fatima secret gives us hope in a world torn apart by greed, selfishness and war. Satan will not win and his evil plans will be thwarted by the Immaculate Heart of Mary. There will be suffering in the time to come, but if we hold fast to Jesus and his mother, we will be invincible. According to her writing, Lucia, who became a nun and died in 2005, Russia would be converted and peace would reign if the Pope and all of the bishops consecrated Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Sister Lucia stated that Pope John Paul II fulfilled that prophecy during a Mass on March 25, 1984 even though he never specified Russia in the prayer. This year Pope Francis corrected the 1984 omission as he prayed, Therefore, Mother of God and our Mother, to your Immaculate Heart we solemnly entrust and consecrate ourselves, the Church and all of humanity, especially Russia and Ukraine. Grant that war may end and peace spread throughout the world. Francis continued saying that Mary's Immaculate Heart is not a magic formula, but a spiritual act that was taking place even as bombs are destroying the homes of many of our defenseless Ukrainian brothers and sisters. According to Pope Francis our greatest weapon is the Rosary. Let us continue to pray for an end to war but also for the conversion of hearts and the full triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Thank you for supporting my channel. May God bless you and keep you. Our Lady, Queen of Peace, pray for us.